for the opportunity to give this talk here. Uh, as uh, Lubomir explained, I decided in the last minute to change the subject of my talk. Originally, I was planning to speak about uh, Liouville integration, bounds for variant curves for Liouville integrable differential equations. But uh, since we heard a lot during the week about the center problem, irreducible components of the space of centers, uh, I think that, uh, that this subject will be more appropriate to the spirit of this meeting. So uh, what I want to discuss is a problem which has a lot of similarities with this problem of describing the irreducible component of the space of centers is the problem of describing the irreducible components of the space of foliations. Actually, I, in, as far as I understand, uh, this uh, problem that I'm going to discuss is a considerably easier problem than the center problem, yet it's very hard. And uh, I expect that the results on the reducible components of the space of co-dimensional one foliations in higher dimensional projected space might help in understanding the space of centers and even might, in some sense, guide the researches on this other problem. So let me start posing the problem, explain exactly what the problem is. So we are considering foliations on Pn. For the time being, n can be any value from 2 to anything, but soon we are going to restrict to n at least 3. So I can always write these objects, co-dimensional foliations, as objects defined by one forms, homogeneous one forms. So uh, just uh, n plus 1 up of uh, homogeneous polynomials. And uh, these polynomials will, still will have a certain degree. Uh, I we write the degree of these homogeneous polynomials as d, d plus 1. And in order to descend to this, uh, this object, descend to the projective space, we ask this one form to be annihilated by the radial vector field. So uh, the degree d is the number uh, of tangencies of a general line with the foliation or distribution. I don't impose uh, integrability. So I can always draw a line linearly embedded in Pn, and our affiliation will have uh, points of contact with these lines. And the number of points of contact, or the tangency, the number of points of tangency will be the degree. Okay? So that's the D that appears in this, this formula. And, uh, of course, here R denotes the radial vector field, and we have this Frobenius integrability condition that guarantees that uh, locally away from the zeros of the AIs, this one form is multiple of an exact differential. So uh, we can just collect the coefficients of this, uh, this polynomial one forms, right? So we have n plus 1 homogeneous polynomials of degree d plus 1, uh, and so they will have a certain number of coefficients. I can count the number of uh, different coefficients, the number of equations imposed by this condition of uh, Frobenius conditions and uh, try to understand, uh, describe this is space of foliation, right? So it's just a space in a certain projective space, right? This is projective space of a certain dimension. The dimension is the number of variables minus one and defined by a certain number of equations. So when the degree of the foliation grows, starting with degree zero, we have just one equation. It's a Grassmannian of lines on, in P3, essentially. Uh, and, uh, but when you get degree grows, we, the, you have more equations and more, more, more space. The space becomes a little bigger. So it's, algebraically, it's a complicated problem. But still, uh, even if the number looks at first sight modest, already for degree three, uh, just to put the equations on a computer it takes a lot of memory. And to manipulate them uh, doesn't seem very feasible, but it's very, it's considerably easier, uh, another of magnitude less than what happens for the center focus problem. So 
that's one aspect of that says that this problem is somehow easier. And uh, there is a classification in small degrees of these objects up to degrees two. So degree zero is just an exercise. Starting from the definition, you can easily show that the foliation of degree zero is just a pencil of hyperplanes. So it's really, so you take a smooth point in PM, let's say in P3. Uh, so we know that there is a, a germ of leaf passing through that point. We can take a tangent direction. We take a line tangent to, to this direction. And uh, by definition, I'm, the way I'm choosing the line, it will have a tangency with the leaf, with the foliation at this point. But at the same time, degree zero, there is no tangency. So what's happening is that just because this line is contained in the leaf, and so you just do the round and see the leaves are hyperplanes, you only think a bit, you see that there is no other way to organize hyperplanes uh, except for that one. So this is a very, very easy exercise. But in degree, if you go to degree one, things are already more interesting. So in the, this is uh, the work uh, in, of Jean Lou, inspired by ancient work by Darbu and Jacobi on the subject. And he gives a classification of the irreducible components. And he, he, founds, he found two irreducible components. So if you want, there are exactly uh, log, one, 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 and log one, two. So the notation that I'm using is very close to the notation that Lubomi used, but here you have to remember that we are no longer in an affine space. We are in a compact space, we are in the projective space, and so uh, the residues of one forms are not free. They must satisfy the residue theorem. And so this residue uh, must, uh, uh, you have a certain relation. So, and, uh, and so in this case, these are, they are all things of this form, the age over age two minus the Q over Q, where age is degree one, homogeneous polynomial, and Q is degree two. So this completely, uh, I don't have any freedom for the, for the residues. They must be these or a complex multiple of this. I cannot put anything else, otherwise I would contradict the residue theorem. Saying other words, if I write this in homogeneous coordinates, this form would not descend to the projective space. But very good, so we have two, two components here. And uh, things get more interesting in degree two. And it was in 96 that appeared this paper by uh, Servo and Lins Neto that there are uh, six irreducible components. So there are four of them that are of this kind. Uh, but the notation that I'm using is slightly different from theirs. So it's log 2, 2, log 1, 3, log 1, 1, 1, 1, log two, one, one, one. And then there are two other, two extra components. You have these four logarithmic components and we have two extras. So one extra is, uh, let's call F, that they call the exceptional component. So let's say that we are describing the reducible components in P3. Uh, so this is just, uh, I identify P3 with Pol polynomials of degree at most one, or at most three, right? This is a vector space of dimension four, so I can do this identification. And I just look up to the action of the affine group. Right, so this, I have a, this algebraic action of the affine group on, on P3. And this is this uh, foliation or the exceptional component. And as uh, explained, this appears in Dulac's list. 
as it explained by Lubomir, this is, uh, should be the log 2 free, but the point is that there is some cancellations and the degree drops, and so let's call this, uh, say that this belongs to, or is contained in S log 2 free, and the degree drops. So it's imprecise and not defined. And finally, there is another family of examples, another irreducible component, and these are the linear pullbacks. I can just take foliation of non P2 of degree 2, take projection through a point, and just take the foliation whose leaves are cones over this, and so this gives another component. So this is the complete list of the six components. Quite simple. So this is a picture that I borrow from Brent Pin of them. And to have an idea of the complexity of what we are looking at and on the space of foliations, let me just uh, recall some results on the degree of this subvariety. So we have, we have this huge projective space, the projectivization of all possibilities of uh, one forms of degree uh, defining an algebraic distribution of degree D. We impose the integrability condition. We have this algebraic set with several irreducible components. And uh, this uh, set has uh, the most basic invariance of this set of the irreducible components are their dimension and their degree. And so this is the list in this case of their dimensions and the degree of some of them. So for instance, this exceptional component, which looks quite uh, inoffensive, simple to describe, the set, the foliations conjugated to this foliation, right, because this is, is something of degree uh, almost more than 150,000. So this says, uh, it's, it's a joke, it's funny. Uh, yeah, I love to, to see big numbers. I laugh at them also. But uh, this somehow says how complex is the problem. It would be too naive to think that, well, uh, I, I was also asked why, why people care about this problem? Why people think about this problem and not just put on a computer and let the computer solve, for them, solve it for them? In principle, it's possible, right? So we have, we have, we have this ideal, explicit, easily computable. And I could put in the computer and ask, well, do a Grobner basis thing to give me the prime, the factorization of the idea, the prime decomposition, whatever. In theory, it should be possible. But this suggests that it will not be that easy, right? And uh, indeed, uh, our methods are not good enough to deal with the problems of this size. Very, very quick. Degree two, I think, nowadays we can do in the computer. But very quickly, uh, the computer will no longer be sufficient, we will no longer have power, we will not have power to deal with this problem. Okay? And so let me explain uh, very quickly. Yeah, yeah. No, just fine. Why think about that and not, we could just program and stay, I don't know, go to the beach if there is sunny and wait the computer to do the job. Yeah. I'm not only talking about usual things. I'm not, not saying that anything I'm sp talking about is new. Okay, so uh, the problem, uh, let me explain how, how Servo, or at, at least the way you understand the Servo and Lis Neto work. So the idea is just first restrict your affiliation to a general P2, right? So you expect to see something like that. You expect to see a contact. So I have a P2 embedded in P3. You expect to see a point of contact. Nearby, uh, around this point, uh, you are going to have a more singularity. You are going to have a first integral because uh, I'm looking at the non smooth uh, the points where the foliation is smooth. And so we have a center. And we are very close to uh, happen to, 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 to be able to use Dulac. But before being able to use Dulac, we have to solve the problem 
what can we say if this picture does not happen generically? So I put a general P2 and there is no tangents at all. What does this mean? This means that this general P2 is not on the image of the Gauss map of the foliation. There is no point of tangency. No point is sent to this P2 and we can look at this thing. So, so we are looking, if you are working on P3, we are looking at surfaces analytic surfaces in P3 with the generated Gauss map. But uh, there is a classification of these objects. Surface with the generated Gauss ma map are either uh, cones or tangent, uh, tangents developable surfaces. So these are tangents of uh, a curve. And essentially that's it. This, uh, and the point is that these uh, this fibers, the fibers of the Gauss map in this case, will uh, define a foliation by lines on P3. And foliation by lines should be a simple thing. Uh, but I, I, I remember the first time that I saw, I learned uh, this classification from a paper of Servo, a recent paper of Servo that appeared much later than the then the, the, the paper where they do a classification, but foliation by line should be just the lines through a point, right? No, this is on dimension two. Dimension three, you have really a lot of possibilities, but they were studied and classified. The, the first one to classify then I think was Kummer in the 19th century. And the classification is essentially like this. So you have, there are not many possibilities. You can look, of course, Lines for a point. That's no surprise. But then what you can do, you can also do the following. You can take a line, a P1, and look at P2. Now you choose a point in this P2, and you look lines contained in this P2 through that point. And now you just choose one point for each P2. Right? And you can get that. And finally, there is another possibility, which is uh, you take the twisted cubic, the normal rational curve of degree three, and you look to the sequence of this guy. So this gives also affiliation by line. And that's it. You have two examples, uh, rigid, and one family with lots of parameters. Okay? And so we, from this classification, it's not very hard to classify the foliations which have this property. And uh, they did uh, in the paper, but without using this result. And, but uh, anyway, uh, you can check that no, uh, that all the examples that appear in degree two can be deformed to one of these foliations. So it's not, there is no irreducible component there except this one. So this is one component which for the answer is no. So otherwise they, they, the answer is yes. We, have, we see that tangency. And uh, you see I, I found, a, I produced a picture of Lynn's net to using a computer <laughs> in the time of writing the paper. <laughs> where. <laughs> Uh, and they, they do something, because there is this subtlety, right? We are looking at foliations on P2. There is no line at infinity. The, the lines are indistinguishable. And uh, if you want to look in the affine space, that's the situation, the, the setting of Dulux, you have to impose the existence of an invariant line and move it to the infinity to have something which is homogeneous, which is of degree two in affine coordinates. And uh, what uh, uh, they use the computer to check is that as soon as I have a center for foliation of degree two on P2, it appears on invariant line elsewhere. No explanation, compute. You put it on the computer and get that. Since this is a fact verified uh, in the, by them, they can use the classification of uh, quadratic vector fields, affine quadratic vector fields, and uh, combining these two, two ideas, uh, reach uh, classification as this irreducible classification. Okay? I think it's a very nice result. 
and shows, among other things, the power of extrinsic geometry, extrinsic differential geometry. Right? They are exploiting the Gauss map and properties of the Gauss map to, uh, to, to, to describe the foliations in degree two. So, for a long time, I, think, I thought that this should be pursued, and I still think, as the study of the Gauss map of foliation, for instance, there is the PhD thesis, the PhD thesis of my first student, Thiago Fassarella, is about of foliations in P4 with the generate Gauss map. But then, the situation here is quite simple. In P4, it becomes really very, very delicate, and there are many, many foliation by lines, a lot of infinite families. It seems hard to be able to use to, to, to this kind of problem. Okay. But anyway, this paper generated a lot of activity, and uh, there are many, many results on the subject, many papers, and there are essentially two types, right? Now the, 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 the results are, well, uh, detecting that uh, such and such class of foliations define an irreducible component. And so if you look at, for instance, uh, this paper here, you're going to see uh, a lot of uh, similarities with uh, this uh, relatively exact one forms that uh, Pavel were discussing during this week, even if there, there is no they, they, are, they appear algebraically uh, without using of relative differentials or consideration about the relative differentials. But uh, anyway, what I want to discuss today is not, I do not want to survey these results, just want to mention that there are, there are a lot of activity and a lot of people pursuing this thing. But I want to uh, discuss uh, how to, how can we, do a similar, draw a similar classification. It will not be a complete classification, I say from the beginning, but it's also based on uh, some extrinsic geometry. But it took me a long, long time to realize that uh, I should not be looking at the restriction of the foliation to hyperplanes, but instead should understand how the foliation intersect lines. More precisely, uh, the idea, the basic idea is the following. So the basic technique that I'm going to use to approach this problem is, is this. I'm going to consider a line, P1, intersecting my foliation. So let's think that we are on P3, so my foliation is something like that. And I have Three, three tangent points. And the, the question that I ask myself is the following. Can I move this line in such a way that it remains tangent, tangent to the same surface if they were, it was tangent at the beginning? Of course, I can, make, I can ask this question for foliation of arbitrary degree. But uh, here... Uh, I have a certain answer, I have a good answer, and the answer is that yes. In this case, degree three, we can. It's just a matter of counting parameters, right? Because here, what we have is uh, the lines tangent to this surface is, for each point, I have a one parameter family, and then I have a two parameter family for each of the surface, two parameter family, two parameter family, you expect that these things, or the, the Grossmann of lines, what am I going to say? But uh, you, you do the computation and you, you see that you can do that. Okay? And indeed, it's better when studying these problems, it's better to not look at the lines, but to look at the map from P1 to P3. Seems a bit strange, right? We are adding complexity. We, instead of looking just the space of lines, I'm going to look in the space of all its parametrizations. So this is the space of morphisms from P1 to P3. And 
Strangely, doing this, adding this uh, redundancy to my parameter space, all the computations become much easier than when you do the computation directly with the space of flights, the Gaussian of flights. Okay? And so the point is that this space comes with a, infin um, a universal family. And an evaluation morphism, right? Because this is, this is just a map, the map F. And here is the map X to F of X. This comes with this evaluation morphism. Then I can pull back my foliation to here. My foliation that leaves it here now becomes a foliation here. And the problem that I'm trying to solve, now I want that the points, a fixed point, I want to deform F in such a way that a fixed point do not leave the leaf it is starting. So essentially, we want to look here in the space of morphisms, a subfoliation, that, can, well, that we call F tan, such that the local leaves are such that when I look at the universal family over this local leaf, the morphism, the, the foliation, sorry, the pullback of the foliation to the restriction of this universal family become the horizontal foliation. So in, in other words, this is the foliation on F time on the space of morphism, whose leaves are the family of morphism that stay on the same leaf. And all this is very, uh, is very easy to manipulate, right? And so this defines from the foliation there, I define the foliation here. And uh, I can look at a, one of the leaves of the foliation, and I can consider the Zariski closure of these leaves. Right? I'm trying now to explain the statement that's over there. And uh, the point is that the difference between the dimension of L bar and L is no bigger than, it's not bigger than three, the difference of the dimension. And uh, essentially this extra dimension that appears is because the foliation on L bar is transversely homogeneous a model of a group that acts on a space of dimension one. And you see delta is equal to three exactly when it's transversely projective but not affine. And uh, delta equal two transversely affine but not Euclidean. Delta equal one transversely Euclidean but not but, but transversely Euclidean. And uh, if you are uncomfortable with these definitions, transversely Euclidean means essentially given by a closed rational one form. Transversally affine means Liouvillean integrable, and transversally projective, it's very close to being Riccati. It's not exactly, but in this case it is. Okay? And also, even if at the beginning we were, we were really looking at this problem of lines on P3, we're not looking more than that. But the computations and the statement, everything can, uh, works in this generality. I do not need to be P3. I can just take any projective manifold. What is important is that we have what we call free morphisms. So there are no obstructions to deform these maps, and they can be deformed in, in, the form in any direction. <coughs> okay. So we prove this, uh, this result. This is a result with uh, Lohé and Touzé, Frank Lohé. Very good. And so it's a result very general, right? It does not use, uh, uses only that your variety is covered by light, essentially. And we are looking at this uh, foliation on the space of morphisms, and we are assuming that this foliation is positive dimension. But uh, in principle, this, surf, this variety could be just uh, a base times P1, and the base could be of general type without rational curves. We are in, in, P, in P3, we have much more. 
We don't only don't know, it's not only covered by lines, but the lines through a point go in every direction. You have a lot of positivity on these lines, and the next result, result explores that. So uh, we assume now that X is simply connected, covered by lines, and uh, we are in a situation where um, I can apply the, the previous result. So the foliation will be transversely projective or, so, or something, at least when this f tang has non-algebraic leaves. And uh, if, I, if I'm able to produce a, a, a morphism, a P1 to X, which intersects every hypersurface invariant by F transversely and non-trivially, then we can actually show that we are in the first possibility that the foliation is defined by a closed iteration of one form. So let me just go back here. One thing that must be said is that if I take a foliation, a general foliation on P3 of degree high enough, what this result is telling me? Nothing. Because in that case, this foliation F tang is the foliation by points. Not very interesting. To be able to deform this line along the foliation is a very serious restriction. They cannot have too many tangencies, otherwise it becomes too hard. It's something that will work only on a small degree. But anyway, the, using this, we can, we can now specialize and see what it gives us in P3. And we are able to prove this structure theorem. Uh, it will be almost a direct consequence of the previous one. So if I take a foliation on P3 of degree 3, then uh, we have uh, four possibilities. The first is that our foliation is defined by a closed rational one form without codimension one zeros. So typically, this is what happens in the logarithmic components. And this also contains the elements which are on the boundary of the logarithmic components with, that are these logarithmic plus exact differentials. Second possibility is that there exists a degree one foliation by algebraic curves tangent uh, to F. So degree one, for those who knows, means that the foliation is defined by an algebraic action of C or C star. And so this foliation is tangent, and the, this degree one comes from an action of an algebraic group. F is the linear pullback, exactly as we saw in the previous case, or foliation admits a rational first integral. In that case, we can not say much. Our method doesn't say much. Even in the case one, it also, the, all the other cases, you can also have a first integral. So, uh, delta on P3, that's our result, right? Delta is at most one. If delta is one, it's, it's one. All the other cases, delta is zero. All the other cases, the leaves of f tang are algebraic. Any other question? Okay. But uh, using this result, uh, in a um, recent work with uh, Rafael uh, Constant Acosta and Ruben Lizardi, they are both here, we uh, transform this list, abstract list, into a, a concrete list, in a list of reducible components. And uh, we are able to prove the following, that uh, the space of foliation, for dimension one foliations of degree three and P3, has exactly 18 distinct irreducible components such that the general element of the component is a foliation without a rational first integral. So this is a precise list and we have a precise description. It's not, uh, I, I, will explain, I will explain the list uh, uh, in a moment. And uh, our second result is that uh, besides these 18 irreducible components, we are aware of five other, five other irreducible components 
that we have a precise description yeah. whose general element have a rational first integral. And we also know uh, one set of algebraically integrable foliations, uh, one parameter, uh, a family, which do not belong to any of the previous components. So it must be contained in, a, in an extra component. We don't know if it's just the set that we're describing or if it's something even bigger. And uh, that's the situation. And perhaps there are some extra components that we are not aware of. But it's only the rationally integrable case. When it's not rationally the integrable, general leaf is not algebraic, we know the reducible component. It's curious that uh, somehow the dynamics, non-trivial dynamics, makes the problem easier than in the dynamically non-interesting case. <coughs> Sorry. So let me try to explain where these components come from and what kind of components do you have. So we have a bunch of logarithmic components, right? So since we are looking at degree three, we have to uh, have poles on a hyperplanes on a divisor of degree five. And so here, this, this first in the list is just a partition, the different partitions of five, right? One plus one plus one, one plus one plus one plus two, one plus one plus three, one, two, two, one, four. No surprise there. And at the end, we have two extra components, which are very like this one, very like these exceptional components. So they are defined by logarithmic one forms with poles on a device of degree two and five and three and four respectively. But they are, uh, when you write down this differential form, this logarithmic form, you have uh, zero divisor of codimension one. And when you divide by the zero divisor, the degree drops, you end up in degree three. Very good. So here we already, this, that these first are irreducible components are the result of Carl uh, Andrade that was reproved and proved in something sharper by uh, Javier, uh, Fernando, and Cesar. Kukerman, Gargiulio, Marge, Marge. Uh, and uh, here there's we have no really good explanation why these guys are irreducible components. We just put in the computer, compute the tangent space. It's a quadratic equation. It, that, that thing is easy. Compute the, the tangent space of, uh, for, uh, of the space of foliation. I give foliation is just solving a linear equation. And so we compute it. We, could, uh, we know the dimension of the, 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 the candidate of a component. We coincide with the tangent space. Poof, that's a component. No, no really good explanation. And I don't think it's easy to produce a systematically good explanation. It's just because here we have this kind of phenomenon. We have this curiosity, this curiosity, no, this, this coincidence that make the degree drops and, okay? Now, these are somehow the easiest to, the easy to describe. They're also the linear pullback. And all the other components, all are foliations are of the following form. So they, uh, they will be invariant by so when you throw away these logarithmic components and the linear, linear pullbacks or all the others or all the other knowns are uh, tangent, uh, are the other components, are formed by foliations, are formed by foliations, uh, tangent to an action of C star on P3. So no need to say that the actions algebraic, the actions of C star on P3 are necessarily algebraic. 
and uh, are defined by a linear vector field in a suitable affine coordinates. So let's fix. Alcides, do you have a question? Alcides, Alcides, do you have a question? Do you have a question? So speak lower. Lower, okay. So, uh, all these actions will be, uh, there will be an invariant hyperplane. Indeed, you have uh, four invariant planes. And in this hyperplane, it will be defined by a linear vector field. Let's call ABC. And I can choose this in such a way that A, B, and C are non-negative integers and relatively prime. Okay. And so in this uh, coordinate space, uh, defoliation will be, uh, let's call it VABC will be defined by a one form, a polynomial one form, which is quasi-homogeneous with respect to VABC and of degree, uh, a certain degree uh, N. Quasi-homogeneous of degree N. And uh, it will also, since it's tangent, it will be annihilated by omega. So this, is, this condition is a uh, Lie derivative with respect to ABC of omega will be n omega. Okay? And so in a certain, the, the general element of the, the reducible component that appear here, let's say, T, 0, 1, 2, 3, is because we are with a vector field of 0 here, 1 here, 2 here, and n equal 3. So the first three numbers that I'm listing here are the a, b, and c, and the last one is n. It's the degree of quasi-homogeneity. What does it mean to be linear? I, I, I was rereading the paper, uh, and we wrote something like that. It, it, so yes, it's yeah. just, that's what I'm describing. Yeah. So this is just exactly the same description that I gave for foliations in the beginning. It's something given by polynomial one form, which is annihilated by the radio vector field. And the condition of, ha of having homogeneous coefficients is that it holds, this holds for the radial vector field. And here would be d plus 2. So this is just the, what we are saying, that's what Javier is asking, is that all these foliations are defined as the pullback from a map from P3 to P, A, B, C. Uh, that you can you can write down, and in, in this uh, x, y, z, one, it's the morphism x, y. At least when a, b, and c are different from zero, there are also the case where a, b, and c are zero, which are they have to you have to describe differently. But yeah, it's tempting to say that this is a linear projection to a way to project the space exactly that the, the fibers, it might be misleading, the fibers are not linear. The, the fibers are orbits of this vector field VABC. But anyway, you have this very homogeneous description. And uh, by the way, the, the, the real one part or important part of the work was to find a way to show that we have just a finite number of possibilities. And then uh, in each possible, we 
could uh, reduce in this case with these tubes, I don't know, 100 possibilities, and then uh, do a case by case check to say that uh, when I actually have a component and when I don't. Uh, so in many of the components that we appeared, we could check that they were a component just because given this data is easy to compute the given A, B, C, and N, it's easy to compute the dimension of the corresponding component or the corresponding set, and we can also compute the Zariski tangent space. So in a very, in a, uh, a lot of cases, we have results that they guarantee that they are equal, or the, in order we could just check that they were equal, and you have this, uh, a lot of examples that were already in the literature, and one extra example here where it's new. So these are the cases where the, where the, no, the most of the singularities that appear here are of Kupka type. I think we, the, the, the Kupka singularities were discussed by someone, and I'm not sure, but, okay. So the, the, then it w w the list continues and we could go on and then the, it, uh, it started to appear some, some new phenomena, which is quite curious. Now we could detect for the first time uh, uh, in this subject, irreducible components, which are generically non-reduced. The equations that we are writing down are not the equations of the set. It has some extra structure, multiplicities appear. So here we have irreducible components of a certain dimension with the risky tangent space, which are not of the, the same dimension. And the simplest example, this I think it's perhaps one of my favorite uh, components that appear in this list, are these, uh, that are very easy to describe and do not fit into this description. It's this, uh, You can start in P3 and consider the morphism or the map, the rational maps, not a morphism, the ma rational map to P1 times P1. That is of this form. And here I can take any foliation. And for instance, I can take a foliation of uh, a Hikachi with three invariant fibers. When we pull back this foliation to here, you get a foliation of degree three. And varying uh, among all possible recards with three variant fibers and all projections that are given by linear forms, you get a reducible component. That's this first one. Right? And, uh, we could go on and list all, all of them. There are very interesting also examples from another point of view. There are foliations which are virtually transversely additive. It's a special kind of Liouville integrable foliation, which uh, the one that, that after a ramification, finite ramification becomes given by a closed rational one form, which is rigid. This is dimension 14. The Zariski tangent space is non reduced and it's, uh, it's there, sitting there. It took a, a good time of, it took a while for us to realize that in this particular example, it, there are no rational first integral, even if they're all singularities that appear uh, algebraically integrable. And then that's it. Uh, we have this, uh, this, uh, these possibilities. So wh what's the message? So why I decide to talk about this, I think this, we started looking at foliations of co-dimension one of degree two. And what was the, the idea? The idea was, well, let's explore what we know about the center variety or the center set in dimension two, in dimension two, thanks to Dulac, to, uh, to explore uh, and see if we can classify. And it worked, it paid out, I'll see this in, uh, and Dominique su succeeded in doing that. We know that the center problem in degree three is very hard. To expect that this magic that happened in degree two 
one center imply a invariant line will hold also in degree three seems a little bit shady. And uh, I, I don't think it will hold. But now we have the uh, beginning of a classification. We don't classify everything. But we can do the other way around. So I may ask, among these irreducible components that I'm presenting to you with explicit expressions, what, which of them define by restriction to P2 irreducible components of the center variety? I don't know. Uh, there is a, a student of mine which right now is looking at uh, problems related to that, is the relation between extension and restriction of foliation, and he perhaps will, might want to, to investigate this, this issue. And, well, I guess that most of these foliations are most known. All these foliations, A, B, C, N, the generic element will have non-degenerate Gauss map. So when we restrict to a general P2, we'll have at least one center. I, I think we are going to have in general just one center. And uh, it would be lovely to compare the foliations that you obtain with uh, the list of uh, produced by, by Zoladek of uh, fine vector fields of degree three with centers. Perhaps from the list you're going to find the missing components or perhaps this will be, uh, will help to clarify some of the components that appear there. Somehow this, this would be, the components that are described this way would have an easy explanation. And uh, the symmetries that we see appeared in dimension two somehow is related to the, is the C star action that disappears in dimension two. You lose homogeneity by restriction. And so this uh, would, uh, I don't know, I think it's worth, we have two lists, it's worth comparing. And, I don't know. But that's what, that's what I want to speak. 